the dance director pulled me aside. I was working on the choreography for my solo and the costume that I would be wearing was an orange unitard. That's a one piece all the way down, orange. She looked me directly in the eyes and she said, lose the weight or lose the part. I was devastated. I stopped eating, I dropped the weight, and I went out on stage smiling through that emotional pain. Every last thread of the trust I had between me and my body had been shredded. But that trust was quickly rebuilt when I fell in love with anatomy during my graduate work at NYU. Muscles, bones, internal organs, the central nervous system, no matter what you believe about how your physical body came to be, it's an extraordinary machine. Absolutely incredible what it does even when we don't pay attention to it. And I'm on a mission to teach people to know their bodies as well as they know their smartphones. <laughs> According to the International Journal of Mental Health and Addiction, the responses to COVID-19 can and do affect a large number of people. And we all know this, but if problems are not identified, acknowledged and treated effectively, it can become chronic. But what if we could move people from overwhelm to optimism? Studies have also indicated optimism is associated with adaptive responses, such as well-being, life satisfaction, even self-esteem. Optimism enhances people's motivation to pursue goals Orient behave, goal oriented behaviors and their physical health and positive outcomes. That's why today I wanna to share with you keeping it real. Regulate, evaluate, take action, and then leverage. Talking about regulating, the question to ask yourself is, am I aware that this tool is available to me? And the answer is yes. You have an incredible central nervous system with over 90,000 miles that's over 144,000 kilometers of nerve endings. Under stress, you, the body reacts, and when the stress releases is over, the body should come down off the stress. Think of the deer that runs, there's, a, there's an impending threat of a lion and the deer runs and the result is that eventually the deer gets away, hopefully, and the response then can come down. Those cortisol levels can release and come down. Think of the possum, the animal that when it perceives a threat, it just crunches, takes down all its systems to a very low level so that the threat believes that the possum is dead. But the possum is able to shake it off and start moving again. Humans have a tendency to get stuck on high or activated or frozen. Keeping it real is about understanding that you have a system that you can understand how to regulate. So do me a favor, you can do like this and make this your new power pose. This would be your range of, mo your range of resilience. Are you able to stay within that? You can put your hands down. Thank you all for those of you that are body centered. Thank you. Are you able to stay within that range? When you have a stress, are you able to take the stress and then release it, take the stress and release it? Or are you one that keeps shooting up high, high with stress, 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 stress? Some of the people that are considered really tight have a very low range of resilience. Some people who are super chill have a much greater range of resilience. What's interesting for me is that when we get into the celebrations and I'm watching it, we're like ping pongs going on my screen, right? It's like, and I'm watching everyone's central nervous system. Don't get nervous, but I'm saying, <laughs> I'm watching people like raise their hands or how come she's raised her hand in the chat, but she hasn't been able to see Steven. He hasn't seen her. Regulating your central nervous system, even in this setting is a fascinating experience. Watch yourself and how that feels. The second thing is to evaluate evaluate. The question to ask is, where am I in my range of resilience? Again, that person that's always stuck on on or stuck on high, or the person who's frozen down, frozen and can't move. We have got to start looking at our own behavior. We have people that are stuck either on high or in frozen. 
Now, let me give you an example. I think about Ruth Brer, right? And Ruth has to be super chill if she is going to testify that someone indeed committed fraud. The person who committed fraud may have a very activated system because they're keeping a secret and they're telling a lie. So Ruth's role is to stay very chill, staying in a very equal range of resilience, to always evaluate where she is. Think about the last gig. Like for me today, this is definitely peaking my range of resilience because this is a tough crowd, but I knew I would be standing in front of people who would accept me and love me and tell me the truth when all is said and done. So I was able to kind of come off of my high. The third step is action. The question to ask yourself is what actions can I take to return to my range of resilience? Now, remember, some people are stuck on high, super high, and some are frozen. But I think about Dr. Mike, for example. He is a guy that brings laughter to help regulate the central nervous system. Now, he may not say that, but this is how I experience him. Or even Jeff, who has luckily been at the beach today regulate, regulating his central nervous system. But Jeff uses the juggling, right? Now, again, he may not know or he may not say, that's not why I do this, it makes me happy. But the physical movement does help regulate his range of motion. If someone is stuck on frozen, here's a couple of questions that you can either ask yourself or a client. In this moment, what smells do you smell right now in this moment? What sounds do you hear? And if you look around your room, can you see three things that are green? It's not about the green, but it's about helping someone connect to their senses again and bring them into a range of resilience, or in your case, bring you into your range of resilience. The last thing is leverage. How do we leverage this knowledge of being able to regulate our central nervous system? Why should we use this to move us from up from overwhelm to optimism? I think about Tildet, Tildet Veron, who is the stress master. When this woman speaks, it is a, such an easy, easy going experience of the rise and fall of her central nervous system. Me who tends to ride a little bit higher when I hear the way she speaks, the way she is, the way she lives and breathes stress mastery, my central nervous system calms right down. We, we can be the bridge to help our clients going forward to regulate their central nervous systems by taking control of our own central nervous system. We have a responsibility right now. We have to be consistent. We have to be on time. We have to be regularly available. We have to set boundaries because that's also in the range of resilience. Keeping it real, regulating your central nervous system, evaluating your central nervous system, taking action, and then leveraging that information. Oh, and that director from the dance company? Well, she made me change my unitard color from orange to blue because it made me look thinner. But we are the best of friends today. And I will always, always be grateful for that defining moment in my life because never again will I lose trust between me and my body. I am on a mission to teach people to know their bodies as well as they know their smartphones, to move from overwhelm to optimism by keeping it real.